All right, let's move into our next lighting pattern, which happens to be Rembrandt lighting pattern. Now, the interesting thing about Rembrandt lighting pattern is that Rembrandt hardly ever used it, only used it on about a third of his paintings. And uh, he was broad lighting, he was doing all these other things, but although that's namesake Rembrandt lighting pattern, if you do see some of his images, you can see the Rembrandt lighting pattern in place in his paintings. Well, what is it exactly? Well, as I move the light around the subject just a bit more, what happens is that the cheek shadow starts to get even larger, the nose shadow starts traversing the upper part of the lip even more. And it's when the nose shadow and the cheek shadow combine that we have Rembrandt lighting pattern. And now instead of having this side of the face pretty well fully illuminated, we really only have just a triangular patch of light right on that far cheek. So go look at some of the Rembrandt images online, you'll see exactly what I'm talking about. Let's get a quick photograph. Chin down just a bit for me, there you go, good. And now when we look at our image up on screen, you can see that the nose shadow is connecting with the cheek shadow, and that's our Rembrandt lighting pattern. When would I use Rembrandt lighting pattern? Well, you know what? We use lighting to either add weight to our subjects or take weight away from our subjects. Uh, most of the time, we're taking weight away from our subjects. So if I have a particularly round-faced bride or round-faced groom, I may put them in a Rembrandt lighting pattern as opposed to a loop lighting pattern. Why is that? Remember when we were looking at the profile view and I de-emphasized the bottom part of the gown because I put it into shadows? Well, that's exactly what we're doing with the Rembrandt lighting pattern. We're de-emphasizing part of the face. We're, only, we're actually illuminating a little less than what we did in a loop lighting pattern. And if we're illuminating less, the subject appears to have a little less weight on them. So we're actually thinning the subject down with our, what's called, it's even a shorter light pattern than before. Loop lighting pattern is sometimes called a short lighting pattern. Rembrandt is even a shorter lighting pattern. Before we finish up, I'm going to show you a broad lighting pattern, which really adds weight to people, but, and it's something I never use. So we'll talk about that before we wrap up here today.